Well, greetings and salutations, everyone. I hope everyone is still doing well and welcome to, depending on wherever you may live, this middle of the night or early morning bonus upload. Before we get into it, a couple links. As many of you know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, channel membership, and the merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. Links to Patreon, PayPal, and channel membership is in the description below. Merch displayed directly under the video. Also, Dogman Frightening Encounters, Volume 1 through 3, the audiobook version. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeff Nadolny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, links to which are also in the description as well. And finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support the channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe. It doesn't cost a cent. Click that like button. Takes half a second. If you don't want to miss out on any of the informative uploads I put out daily, click that bell icon and folks, please leave a comment. Why? Well, because all these things really do help the channel to continue to grow and go. And yes, folks, they definitely do matter. Now, everyone, I have taken far too much of your time. Let's jump into this middle of the night or early morning bonus upload, shall we? All right, guys. So I have some very important news. Uh, I did let you guys know that I had gotten a publisher for the book that I finished or finishing for Victor. Uh, today, I emailed the rough draft to them. And in celebration of that, I figure let's share the second time Victor came on the channel. And the first time was a little bit, it wasn't very long and he was a little bit rough. The second time he eased into it, uh, he was still going by his alias, William. But for celebration, I wanted to share this one with you because it is one of my favorites. And I am very excited that this book will be out very soon. Let's get into it. All right, guys. Tonight, I've got something extra special for you. I've got William on the line with me. William? Hey, everybody. And Glad to be back where you go. And what we're going to do is, instead of doing a Q&A... <clears throat> Um, Bill and myself were chatting for a while and we decided to have kind of like a sit down, um, let's just BS it, talking and, you know, get to know Bill and not have so much formality to everything. Uh, I think we can get a lot more, um, information and just, just to get to really know who William is and experience William. Um, so he was down for it and I think it's a good idea. Uh, last night I was um, talking about a subscriber who reached out to me and his name was Zach and he was concerned about getting in trouble uh, for bringing a rifle on the hunting property and the werewolf uh, stating um, some there's two kind of misconceptions there. Um, William, would you like to shine some light on the werewolf on what he said? Okay. Yeah, last, uh, Zach, you're not going to be in any trouble for carrying a rifle on your hunt club. That's for sure. And what the werewolf was doing, I'm certain it came from the breeding program. And what he was doing, he got a miscon missed his words and what he was saying was or trying to say was that he was going to protect you and your father while y'all was on that property if anything was to arise that y'all got in trouble that he was going to take care of you and your dad not that he was asking for y'all to take care of 
protect him, but he was going to protect y'all. So it's kind of like you've made a peace treaty with this werewolf, and he is going to be taking care of you now. It's kind of like you've got a, you've kind of got like a friend, like I do. But take this now. Don't don't get overconfident with him, and always watch him. Always keep your eye on him. So he's kind of got like a guardian angel, but he's got to be extra cautious. Yes, and I always carry protection with you. Never, never go in the woods without your protection. Never. Is this the first time that you've, I mean, have you heard of anything like this before? Besides Sebastian um, and the, 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 the three of them when they, they rescued you. Uh, have you heard of any civilians of this happening before or no? This is how the breeding program is supposed to work. This is how they should be acting towards humans. This is what they're supposed to be. This is what the breeding program put instills in them after that. You know, while, the, while we've got them in there and the subliminal persuasion and everything that we use towards it. This is what they're supposed to do towards a human is to protect the American people. This is what they are supposed to do. This right here is a prime example of it. But he got his words mixed up. He said it instead of the way he worded it. He said, should have said that he was here to guard you, not you to guard him. So that that must make you feel pretty good that the program that you've been involved with for most of your adult life is working. It's, you know, I mean. Yes, it makes me feel really good. Uh, if we could get the dog man on board with that, I would be thrilled. Uh, but the dog man's not working out as well as the werewolf has. Right. So. Now, um, I we had talked about this a little earlier. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, I, I said, you know, a lot of people were wondering about the um, long, probably like it was like a ten-day hunt for a Sasquatch across a couple of states. And uh, I was wondering if you, you know, you don't have to go into, you know, an hour long story. Um, Cause I know we want to get a couple more things, you know, into it. Uh, but would you, would you care to share a little bit of that with us? Yeah. Uh, there was a big foot that was, stealing pigs or hogs from a place in Rainbow City, Alabama. And this was over a period of about three years. There had been 11 agents that went after this Bigfoot. And finally, I got my chance to go after him. And uh, I told the CO I wasn't coming back till I got him. So I get taken to Rainbow City, dropped out, go to this pig farm, and they've got a closed circuit TV, real grainy. I mean, it was bad, but you could you could see what was going on. But you can see this thing come into this enclosure in this uh, barn, covered barn, didn't have sides on it. But you could see him come in and reach over into this pen and pick up this hog that weighed 700 pounds and put it on his shoulders and walk out of there with this hog and leave with it. It was alive when he left with it. Well, I get down there two days after he's stolen this hog and 
talked to the man, and he had taken, this was like 13 hogs that he had stolen from this place anywhere. He said 500 to 800 pound hogs. This one, he said, weighed 700 pounds. So I start tracking him, and he's headed west. And I get out, start out through there, and if anybody's from the south, they know how the soil is. And it's not, you know, it hadn't, it wasn't a real rainy season. And these tracks are two and a half, three inches deep in places. So, you know, he's got a 700 pound hog and I'm figuring this fellow weighs probably close to 800 pounds. So he's carrying his own body weight, you know, on top of his shoulders. And uh, leaving two and a half inch tracks, they was 19 inches long, eight and a half inches wide at the toes, and six and a half inches at the heel. I track him first day, get west of uh, I-59, camp out, get up early the next morning, start out again, making good headway, still following the tracks, are still just as deep as there was. And uh, the following day, on the third day, I find the hog or what's left of the hog. And what's missing from the hog is the two hams, the back strap, and the two shoulders. And that is all that's taken. But you can actually see in this hog where it has taken its hand and ripped these pieces of the meat out. You can see where it took its hands and ripped these pieces of meat out. But at this place, there's a second set of tracks that's joined it, has came to this place and met it. And uh, they're a lot smaller. I guess they're there to help it carry this meat is all I can figure. But anyway, I start tracking and... I continue tracking. Uh, this goes on for the next uh, uh, let's see, it was the third day. No, yeah, the third day, I think it was. I looked up on the ridge above me and I seen the small I seen a small big foot. First first I've seen of them. And uh, it left before I got my camp broke, and I'm going on and still tracking, still tracking the tracks of the big ones, big, big foot. The one that I'm tracking is down to about inch and a quarter now. So it's about as what he should be leaving his normal tracks. This day, I finally spot him for the first time. He's probably 1,200 yards away from me. You know, no way to get a shot off at him. And uh, he's looking back at me, and I'm looking at him. And uh, so he takes off. I take off after him, and I start really pushing him. I start running. And back in them days, I could... I could run probably 15, 16 miles running, running in a day, and then, you know, do some walking and all. So I was covering a good amount of territory, so I was pushing him pretty hard. And uh, it went on there. I didn't see him for a couple more days. I think it was the seventh day before I got to see him again. And... uh we was up on the north. We had crossed into Mississippi. And I was at the north end of Mississippi. 
and we was halfway or further across the state of Mississippi, and he turned south like he's going due south now. And he's following this small river, river tributary down through there. And I decide I'm going to get ahead of him or try to. And uh, he's, uh, I run through the night down through the fields beside this tributary trying to get ahead of him. And up to about, I don't know, two or three o'clock the next day and uh, stop, look, search around. I can't find no tracks. And I decided I've got ahead of him or he's either circled back behind me or he's crossed that tributary. So I set up and wait on him there for a good while. And I figure, well, I need to double back and see if he's actually came through yet or if he's double back on me or if I need to double back on him and go back. Well, I walk back for approximately an hour. And he's caught either wind of me or had seen me and double back. I found his tracks. He had crossed the river, found where both of them had crossed the river. I got across the river and it got dark on us and I camped another night to finally it came down, got to the tenth day and I found where it went into a cave system. And uh didn't want to go in there. I was trying to talk myself out of it. Cave systems get you in trouble. So much can go wrong inside of a cave, you know. Uh, just everything can go wrong. Looking inside of it now, it uh, looked like it wasn't about four foot high. I could see where it went in. So I finally, I followed him in maybe 250, 300, 400 feet. I could hear something starting to growl. So I stopped and was waiting, waiting and waiting, trying to wait it out. Let it come to me. I figured, I figured that'd be the best way. Trying to think whether to back out or go forward. I was shining my light forward and it looked like it opened up in about so much further forward that it it looked like it opened up, maybe 40 or 50 feet front of me. And uh, I was about ready to back out. And then I heard something. And uh, sounded like something sliding behind me. And I looked behind me, and there was two smaller ones crawling out behind me. I don't know where they came from behind me, but they was probably 30, 40 feet behind me. And they was crawling out behind me. And it, I noted it wasn't the one I was hunting. So I stayed put, started to back out again. And then I decided, no, the only way to do this was to go forward. So I went forward and I got into this large chamber. It opened up. And sure enough, he was in this large chamber. And we faced off right there. And... Uh, I ended up, I shot him one time, and he went down, and it was over, and uh, I came back out of the cave and got on the satellite radio and called out and got them to send me uh, five more men in the pilot, and we drug him out using ropes, and we had to drag him about 1,200 yards where we could get him on to a helicopter to get him out of there. And that was a chore. But there was, like I said, there were seven of us. He ended up, he was about eight foot, eight inches tall and weighed a little over 800 pounds. So he was a, he was a good size Bigfoot. We drug him out of there. He was a big, 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 big boy. And uh, there was a bunch of 
lots of bones, you know, for pigs and hogs and deer. And two humans was in there. So they had actually taken some lives. So, but we don't know where they came from. Now, when, uh, when you guys, you guys dragged them out, out of the cave with the ropes, um, and then you, you did the exploration of the cave, I'm assuming, with the bones. Uh, were the human bones, had they been there for a while, or were they fairly yes, new? They'd been, in there, they'd been in there for a while, yes. Okay, so it could have been a long yeah, time. They, they could have been 10, 12, 14 years old. Okay. Now, um, <clears throat> I know me and you have talked about this, um, but just so everyone else um, understands it. Now, when you said that that Sasquatch turned at 1,200 yards and saw you, um, they're not like the Bigfoot or the uh, Dogman or the Werewolf. They they have no knowledge of your team because they weren't the, in the breeding program. They just think you're the average hunter. Um, so it's is that yeah, normal? They, yeah, they don't know me from nobody. So is that normal for him to just take off from someone like that? They just want to. Yes, yes, they just, they just want to go away. Okay, so there's there's two since just since we've been talking, there's two things that you know you've shared with us that prove you know everything you've been saying is true. The breeding program works and it's doing what exactly it needs to do, <clears throat> and these things don't want anything really to do with you with humans unless they are provoked like or pushed or very hungry um that's correct so now <clears throat> um i know throughout all of these questions um i've been trying to you know look and see a lot of things that were mentioned when you brought up the 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 feet size the foot size there i instantly w thought about the canadian uh, i forgot the the subscriber's name it was a female she had wanted to know more about the canadian giant that you had hunted um is that something that you can get into or is that classified or can you maybe share a little uh, bit of that with us yeah i'll share what i can of it uh I had just become a full bird colonel and the CO had sent three men up there, three agents to do actually some reconnaissance to see if they could find anything. Their, their goal was to go up there and locate it. And they had been up there several days and they called in and said they was on the Idaho, Montana, and Can Canadian line. And that they had found 26-inch tracks, fresh tracks, that was actually on the inside the United States in Montana and the CO asked them if they had a visual and the answer was no and he asked them to stay safe get a visual and to call back in with how many men they thought it would take to kill it and to get it out, but not to approach it, just the thrill. And that was their order, just to make a visual. So, got off the radio, that was the last contact we had with them for 10 days. 
we had to have somebody to go to check on them because the protocol was broke. They didn't radio back in. So I went myself. They dropped me about 30, 40 miles from their last known location. I walked in and I got to the Canadian, Idaho, and Montana border where they was gave their last position at. I walked about four miles into Montana. I found a backpack, about 200 rounds of spent ammunition and two rifles that was bent. And that's all I found. I then spent about five days, four or five days, hunting their bodies and never found them. I then was pulled out of the area. That's, that's, and you were just there, you know, like you were, just like a, a regular uh, military person would never leave a troop behind. That's what you were there That's for. Right. You were just. Yeah. And I was there to recover bodies. <clears throat> when you said 26 inches, now the, the eight foot, what was it eight foot eight or something? Sasquatch with a 19 inch. That's. Yep. That's. Seven inches larger, so we're talking. This thing was whatever it was. Fifteen foot, probably. Yeah, I was gonna say about fourteen, fifteen foot. And uh, what's the largest Sasquatch that you've come across in your or or read about or anything? <clears throat> the biggest I've seen is twelve foot four. So this this probably wasn't. I mean, you don't like speculating. No. You only like, you know, you don't no. like to talk about anything that's not, that you don't have solid fact no. on, but this no. was more than likely not a Sasquatch. No. The 12 <clears throat> foot four one had uh, oh, 20 and a quarter inch feet. Hmm. That's, so. that's ginormous. Jeez, I'm crow. Yeah. So now, um, <clears throat> when you were full bird colonel, you were going out doing these missions. Um, now, now that you're a CO, now that you're CO, you keep going out and doing this. Is that mandatory? Is that what your job entails uh, that you're supposed to be doing this? Like your other CO, your the CO that was before you, he he seemed very. Uh, laxed and lazy was his job was he, he supposed to go out in the field i'm supposed to go out and take care of hot spots i'm supposed to take a six-man team go out and rid the hot spots when we have hot spots and there's 61 across the usa right now but i gotta get back full full manpower before i can do that I've got two teams working hot spots right now, but I'm staying in the office. I've got one team working a case in Georgia, and uh, but the former CO he wasn't leaving the office. He was sending myself, me, to take care of hot spots. Now, um, <clears throat> really quick, the the Georgia is is that is that the uh, is that the doctor that? Uh, yes, yes, it is. Can you can you shine some light on that, or is that something that you can't talk about yet? Or it's uh, <clears throat> it is a pack of dogmen. And evidently they did something to get her to pull the car to the wrong side of the road. And she either exited the vehicle or they 
got her out of the vehicle. Yeah, because her body was on the other side of the road from the vehicle, correct? It was. And uh, they have been after them since the following day and still haven't caught up to them. But they are still hunting. And she's At this point. that that doctor was very a very educated woman. She did a lot in the medical. Highly. Yeah. So there, there. I mean, there, there, there had to be some sort of uh, plan or some sort of ambush because a, a smart, intelligent woman. Yeah. Yeah. Some. You know. Yeah. Um. I just I, I I every time I hear about Dog Man and doing these crazy things, I always get reminded of the uh new hampshire incident with the ambulance and that 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 story when that subscriber reached out to me it, it blew my mind at how intelligent the dog man is um and just merciless you know it's just it's 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 just a, a savage killing machine um <clears throat> but you know like we had said previous talking that it's nothing as intelligent as the the sasquatch or the werewolf which the werewolf is you know right under us it seems because it's got a language it can understand it can read it's got cognitive thinking it's you know and i said this to you a while back that it's like the uh dog man is the retarded inbred cousin of the werewolf and you know it's just i don't even know sometimes they the whole uh the whole premise of them still being free to roam around is is i i i can see the the werewolf being active but these things are so uncanny you know uncanny and unpredictable but you've had a lot of success with them too i mean you you said just recently you did a call out to them and you know i think what there, there was 10 that you called out and a bunch came back with them uh what canada has gave me permission to <clears throat> monitor all of canada and when i have them go up there when i do have them cross the line out of the states to go up there i do call them back immediately because Canada has been good to us about this I immediately call them back and I had 10 I can't remember if it was 10 or 12 that was tagged I called back and when they got back there was I think it was 10 I had 27 more that came back with them that was wild that wanted to go into the program. And they can get their point across to you about this program. They've got a way of communicating with us. Is it? Is but it? But I, I can't go into that. Right, right. Yeah. I, 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 um, now, when they come in, is it... Uh, is there a certain protocol that is, I mean, I'm sure you just don't have them come in and they get tagged and you ship them. I'm sure there's a... No, they go through a, they go through a wellness check, make sure they're not diseased. They go through all kind of, you know, the fitness, uh, get all kind of shots uh, and everything. They're, they're healthy as a horse when they leave back out of here. So there's veterinarians that specialize just, yes. or doctors, or some some sort of medical. Yes. Well, yeah. There's <clears throat> uh, there's seven veterinarians for werewolves. There's five for the dog man, and at one time there was four for the bigfoot, but they're no longer. You know, they're no longer around. Right. The program. And I, I don't understand why they didn't just go back out and get another male while they had the females like they did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because now, you know, now we, if 
the program, if we wanted to do the program again, we would have to get another male and get females. And that's the hardest one of all of them to get. Is the female? Is, well, the female and the male. Okay. Both. Both of the, you know, they're the, they're the hardest ones to get. No, it was it was the male, right? That was that was the that, that, issue in the first one. Yes. Okay. So he yeah. could have been old, sick, or there could have just been. Yeah, there's no way to know <clears throat> their age. Right. I mean, Sebastian don't know his age. Uh, they 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 aged him when they called him at age twelve. When they called him at fifty-two, which would make him eighty now, which. They claim that's the lifespan of one. So, you know, any any time now could be his you know. Yeah. But they don't they don't know his lifespan for sure. Right, that's and what I was just gonna say because it. Yeah, there's no way of really knowing. I mean that's pretty much a guesstimate, you know. It's like okay, yeah, that's, well that's right. Going by yeah, wild that, ones or, you know. Yeah. You know, he was <clears> wild. He he is a wild. Right, but I'm saying, like, getting an age off, like, you know, just visuals, you know. I mean, right now it's still a learning process because he's yeah. one of the very first ones, I'm, if I'm pretty sure, right? They estimated the first dog man to be 10 years old. And when they captured it, 54. And Raphael came in in 85. The same year that I came in, the first original dog man died in '85. So Raphael, he's not the original dog man that came in. Raphael came in the same year I did. The original dog man died in '85 of old age. Good to go. Okay. Raphael died and came in in '85. The original dog man died in 85. Uh, so they estimated the original dog man to be 65 years old. Just going off the age they gave him when they caught him. When, when they caught him, yes. Right. But I think like you had said, there's like when we were talking about Sasquatches and stuff, there's no way to age them, you know, like you had said one time that you can't go by their teeth or, you know, anything. It's just, yeah, how, it's... What do you age them by? I mean, you know, you can open a horse's mouth and kind of get an age off of them to age them by. And, but, I mean, I ain't going to open a dog man's mouth to try <laughs> yeah. to age him. Yeah. I mean, I might try Sebastian, but... <laughs> Yep. So, um, another interesting, uh, thing that gets brought up by the subscribers and, you know, I think it's very interesting to all of us is the cave dwellers, um, in Tennessee. And, um, oh, yes. <laughs> that is just, you know, like you said, it's, uh, it, the missing link almost, you know? Um, yeah. Uh, that was, uh, that is the third set of them that we've, we've encountered. Uh, my dad's teams encountered two sets of them prior to me. This was my first set. When your dad uh, encountered them real quick, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but were the, was that in the same area or... Uh, no, both of their teams came out of West Virginia. Okay. So it was mountainous area, and it's on the eastern Appalachian mountains. Yes. Part of the Appalachian Trail in that yep. area? Okay. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, part of the Appalachians. And, uh, but yeah, there, there's some thick people. Uh, homo erectus or something like that is what they classify as a mass. And uh, 
I can, I, I've hated to went one on one with any of the men, and I'm in tip top shape. So yeah, I mean, they was they was they're thick, they're muscled. They ain't got puffy muscles. They they got the long muscles, like farmer strong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they had tools. They had you know stone axes. Things like this. We brought it all back. We took everything in the caves. Uh, we was gonna bring. We was gonna try to keep the old man alive, but he came at us with an axe, and that wasn't that wasn't possible. Right. We wanted to try to keep one alive, but it was impossible. I mean, every one of them, even the women, made it where you couldn't couldn't do that yeah it's like they just they they didn't want to come with you and they defended to the end you know i mean i bear the scars yeah i you uh i don't know if i can say i was fortunate to see a couple of pictures but they were not pleasant um and it didn't look like they were pleasant to you know i definitely whew um, these things are almost like exactly like what I said, a missing link, like part of an ancient yeah. civilization. You said you'd find tools, pottery, they, they use fire. Um, fire. they're, you know, they, we had talked a while back or earlier, you know, they're hunter gatherers and that's what the first, you know, before we learned how to farm, you know, that's what these people were, was hunter and gathering and. You know, they needed that strength and, you know, the the fearless raw power or whatever. Um, how would, would you classify them as intelligence, like uh, as intelligent as a Sasquatch or smarter? Uh, I don't know where I would put them on it. They was just primitive primitive brute force hmm. i wonder if there's i wonder if they've ever i mean i'm sure there's probably been that one in a million chance that these these human pre pre-human things met up with a sasquatch or one of the big three I, I bet you they know about them, and, you know, I wonder if there's any, did you see any hieroglyphs or any writings on the wall or any, you know? No, there wasn't nothing like that inside the cave. Huh. What gave them away, what gave their location away, they actually had a hole through the top of the cave where the smoke would come out the top. Oh, okay. And how they, and how they did that, it, that thing was probably 30 foot up through there. And how they got that board up through there, I'll never, I, I don't know how they got that done. But they did. Yeah. At least they, they got some intelligence not to die of carbon monoxide poisoning, at least, you know. Yeah. So. You know, to have that fire inside that cave that far back in there. Because it was 200 feet back in there. Yeah. And warm, you know. Now, with the old man, if you or any of them, <clears throat> would they have been kept for a while, or you know, like with the they reptilian been, thing? Yeah, they would. Have, they would have kept them alive and studied them and uh, tried to keep them alive and studied them as long as they could. Uh, I mean, they they still they're still studying them now. You know, right. bodies. Uh, you think there's any more out there somewhere? I'm sure there are somewhere. That's scary. That's I don't know. I don't know if that's more scarier than the big three or what. I don't. Well, you know, uh, the Kentucky, for some reason, has has reports of them all the time huh. on the Appalachian Trail. You know, I just keep thinking of that movie Descent whenever I think about those things. So the, those, the, not they weren't cave creatures or cave men like that and that, but they were like, you know, I can't imagine just the just the primitive 
just oh god that must have been terrifying you know i mean yeah. even for you to you know i mean you've dealt with some serious shit and i'm yeah. sure that you've had a couple of times where it's been hairy for you and i who um yeah i'll be glad when i can <clears throat> pay my most scarce one but that that's gotta i gotta get it cleared yet so, yeah, I've told you about it. But. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, a lot of people, uh, I know you've mentioned 12 types of cryptid. Um, I know you don't have your files in front of you. Um, the Goat Man. We, that thing is evil, it seems like. It seems like uh, with the big three... Uh, an encounter can go one way or another. Could go good, like uh, the case of last night with Zach, or it could go real bad. Um, but it seems like the Goat Man. Every time there's a encounter, there's always no. It's always a violent encounter. Um, it is is. Do you know anything about that? Like, yeah, every time. <clears throat> never good it's never a good turnout with the with the goat man we've uh, i've never hunted i've hunted never found i've got one agent that's hunted and came back with one got pictures of it uh and to read his file i i, I that's that's something I need to write up and put put out there for a story for y'all. Yeah, that's I, one I need to write up. I think people would like to hear that because that's that's one of the ones that you know. I mean, people hear about it, and unfortunately, with like the Bigfoot, the Dog Man, the Werewolf, all these other things. Uh, this creepy pasta phenomenon and the Reddit pages. I pretty much ruined it, um, you know, with like even native lore. Uh, yeah. There, it's it's just now it's become just uh, you don't know what's what's real or not. I mean, you really don't know anyway. That's why it's called cryptozoology. But there used to be some sort of, you know, like there wasn't creepy pasta involved. There wasn't these crazy stories that you know, fictitious, you know, so. I, I'm sure a lot of people would love to hear a true uh, goat a man cow love cow. Yeah, yeah, that would be really amazing. Um, okay. So. Uh, I'll, I'll be glad when I get to the <clears throat> point where I can post your picture. Sorry. Yeah. That'll be that'll be something. Yep. I look forward to. Uh, Jersey Devil Moth Man. Yeah, the Jersey Devil. You you went looking for that, right, or no? Yeah, yeah. I, I searched for it. I found nothing. So it's almost like that. That I don't. I mean, there's so many myths and legend about that. It's the thirteenth son of a witch, and you know, it's yeah. part of the devil, or you know. But you you can't really discount anything, especially nowadays you know there's just so much oh. that never it, that's coming to light now you know it's unimaginable no. i mean john sumner of your one of your subscribers john sumner he he asked about mermaids yeah you know and they're for real they've got them they got them at beaumont set South Carolina in tanks, you know, they're for real. I don't know if they're they're trying to militarize them or not. Now that you know, that's not my field. Right. You know, my fields consist of things that's on four legs or two legs, and and it's on the land, and uh, that's that's our specialty. Yep. And. Uh, which mostly consists of three things, mostly. Yes. But, uh, 
you know, we've got black cats, we've got Ilchuka Cobra, we've got Mothman falls under us, uh, Jersey Devil falls under us, Dogman, Werewolf, Bigfoot, Gargles. I mean, giants. Um, giants. What about what about? I've seen a couple people. Goat man. Yeah, I've seen a couple people write about fairies or the the small no. trolls. Do they? They are they? Uh, no. Have you witnessed those? I've never seen. Never. Okay. So it's something that's not in the enclosures or anything. Nothing we have down there. Okay. I only right now. We've got dog men. We've got werewolves. We've got reptilians. We've got domesticated animals that they, we try. We use to train these creatures with. Uh, the reptilians are, is for some reason, is. A hot topic as of late. I don't know if it's because of the political things that are going yes. on or what it is, but people are people are uh, asking a lot of questions about those. Um, yeah, it's. They always think there. There a lot of people think there's a lot of them in office, and uh, at present time, I can say there's none high-ranking officials. That's holding any office or opinions. I can say that with a hundred percent certainty. Right. Here's I got something, and I just remembered. Um, you and I had talked a little bit before we did this. A subscriber. Um, <clears throat> when you and I were talking the first time we did this, uh, and it was more formatted. Um, one of the questions or statements. Uh, it it almost seemed trollish, and it was actually, but the comment was um, it didn't make sense. The acreage underground, and they're not being uh, electric line, telephone line, and you know I could instantly answer that as you know I was reading it. It, like you're not gonna see a substation. There's gonna be something above it. Um, you know, is did you did you catch that one? I, I don't know if you caught that one where the person said, you know, there's got to be some sort of lines, or you know, this is a lie. There's not that big of a something underground, and I don't know if you saw that or not. I don't know if I seen that or not. But I mean, it's a pretty simple. Answer your own question on that. You know, I mean, it'd be like building a a basement. A with basement. A, yeah, yeah, exactly. There's going to be just larger. Yep. The, and, the Virginia facility, my enclosures up there. I have seventy eight enclosures that are eight acres or larger. Each one of the enclosures. That's not counting the walk between or drive between areas, which are 12 feet, where you can drive a golf cart between them. I have to have that room to drive where I can get the feed through and everybody can travel through there. Yeah. yeah. It's lit. It's on timers. Everything's the, you know, it's like daylight and dark at times. And have to, you know, we have, we have to, you know, like Sebastian tomorrow night, I'm taking him out. I just hope it ain't a full moon. I hadn't even checked. I'm not really uh, sure. I know it, I'm not probably going to see a full moon up here for a little bit because the storm's moving in, but there might be. Who knows? Um, getting close. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I know that, um, there's something you got planned in the future. Oh, yeah. You want to share yeah. that with everybody? Yeah. yeah. All yeah. right. Uh, I picked a, a subscriber a 
because he asks such good questions. He goes by the name Jack Hanson. And I expect Jeff, and I'm getting both of them vetted so they can come to my facility in Virginia. And this is going to be when Jeff gets himself well. He has to be well so he can go into the enclosures with me and Jack. And there's going to be a photo session taken. And they will be posted on the internet of him and Jack and Sebastian. And I'm excited when you, I, I, I wasn't on the phone with you when you notified Jack of this. But I know when I got the notification from you, um, I had two feelings flooded. I was thrilled and happy and nervous all at once because it, it was just like a, uh, um, a dream come true. But, you know, I don't know what's, <laughs> you know, I... I feel like I'm gonna get. I'm either gonna be so uh, awestruck and happy or afraid, you know, that I I may just pee my pants. Um, and that's to I I thought that, and I, I I giggled to myself when you said that after you know when we were talking and you told me that, and in my head I was like, I'm gonna piss my pants when I see Sebastian, because, <laughs> you know, I mean, this is. Uh, this is a dream come true, and I, I am, you know, a couple, three this months way. away, and this is going to be amazing. And you know what's crazy is I vetted you. Everybody's like, vet, vet him, vet him. He's lying, and now you're vetting me. And another thing is, is out of, I think there's at least 30 of the Q&As and, you know, you and I together, um, everything that you have ever said has just matched. It's never, there's never been a differ. It's always on point. Um, even if it's weeks away, you know, I mean, you could get a, a troll from one week to try to, you know, say something and bam, you've got the exact same. You've never, and so this is amazing, you know, so right now I know, I know heart of heart that you're 100% true and heart of heart. Now it's really scary because I'm going to see a werewolf and I'm, wow. How was Jack on that? What did he, how did he act on that? Was he excited? He, he said he didn't know how he was going to react when he seen it. He said he <laughs> didn't know if it's who he sailed or how 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 it would go when you sing it? Yeah, because I mean we're not you, you know. We're just the average, you know. Just because I have my channel and I have had so many, you know, I've had my own encounter, but I was eighteen years old, and I still question it sometimes because that's what human nature is, and it's the society telling us that it doesn't exist even though i hear and read all of these encounters and talk to so many people this is going to be in front of my face this is i'm going to i'm going to be able to smell his be able to touch. yeah and that is i'm going to have a conversation with a werewolf and i'm 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 wow He's going to wrap his hand around your face. That's not nice. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be gentle. Oh, I'm sure. I mean, he's your best friend. So, um, I think, I think we've done a, a pretty knockout job on this one. Um, is there anything else you'd like to, you know, I mean, just something that you want to throw in? Uh, just everybody.
everybody enjoy the forest and, uh, you know, stay safe out there, but enjoy it. That's what it's out there for. Yeah, and Zach Y'all said let that. this program work. It, it, you know, that's what these what this program's for is for these creatures out there to take care of y'all. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's the whole thing. And um, you know, one I I the email that I got from Zach after sharing his encounter. He said that same exact thing. He said the same. I went out to sit on the hill and observe nature because it's beautiful and not a lot of us do it. And this program, he said, this program really works. And it's, 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 it's amazing that this werewolf is, you know, it got its words mixed up, but protect us, you know, like he's from the, he's from the breeding program, but he's been out in the woods for a while. It's, it's really, it's, it just shows. And it may, it must make you feel great. I mean, you know, something yeah. that you've been involved with, your father was involved with, you know, and just to, you know, one day you're, hunting them down, the ones that go off track, and then to hear a good outcome is is really yeah. cool. So, And I don't get to hear many of them. I really don't. And to hear is is amazing to get to hear that story. And, you know, I do get to hear some. You know, I don't hear many, but I do hear some. And I got one more thing I want to add. That first story last night that you read, yep. that young boy that was... Yeah, the 16-year-old, yeah. That, yeah, he was faced with a shapeshifter. Yeah. And why? Did he get in the car again? <laughs> yeah, why would you get back in the car with that thing? Yep. You're braver than I am. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. And, you know, we, we had a talk about that today and, you know, that, that was, uh, you said that to me and then, and then I, I was, you know, you said, why would it do that to that 16 year old kid? And, yeah. you know, I, I came up with the conclusion just because I've got family members on the res up North, you know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, unfortunately there's a lot of poverty on reservations and that area um and it could have been a native american um more than likely if it was a shapeshifter it was and he could have been uh under the influence and just did it as a thrill or there might be something that he, this poor guy doesn't know and maybe in the future he'll find out unfortunately but you know I don't, I wouldn't have gotten back in the car. He is, yeah, one brave son of a gun. You're a brave man. You're a brave man to get back in that car. <laughs> yep. So, I might um, have rode back, but he had been on the hood. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> or at least, you know, hang off the top of the, uh, off the uh, roof of the car and just kind of like uh, hydroplane it. Okay. But yeah, today went great. Um, I'm really happy with everything. I I liked this because it was more, it was more real. You know, it was uh, it was a good good feeling to just be able to shoot the shit with you and get things out. You know, instead of being so formatted and answering the same questions over and over, over again over. and. You know, so I think we should do some more of these uh, community talks or whatever we'll call them. I don't know. Back, okay. Backyard gab session. Um, yep. But so I'm going to I'm going to bid everyone farewell for the evening. And uh, I want everyone to stay safe. William. Me too. Y'all stay safe. Enjoy the forest. Make sure to go out there. Carry something to protect yourself always. I, I, I'll tell you, I condone that. 
Uh, but always carry something. But enjoy the outdoors. And I bid you farewell for tonight. Good night, everybody. All right, folks. I hope you all enjoyed this middle of the night bonus upload as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you. Middle of the night or early morning bonus upload. Uh, I'd also like to thank you for supporting the channel. It is, after all, your support that helps this channel to continue to grow and go. And what makes it a place for people to want to share their experiences, ideas, and theories. Ridicule and judgment free, just treated with the respect that we all deserve. Thank you. Everyone stay safe, happy, healthy, and ever vigilant, keeping an eye on our children, pets, family, and friends. These creatures are real. They are out there, and they're definitely dangerous. Share this information with the people you love and care about, and it may just help save their lives someday. Until next time, never stop asking questions, never stop searching for the truth, and God bless.